famine. Famine is our shame. Witnessing famine and seeing people die is a, is a terrible thing to see. And of course, it's a thousand times terrible for, for the victims. All over the world, 80% of our problems today are conflict related in the four countries that are facing famine. Where we have access, where we have the funds, we can avert famine. That's the good news. The bad news is without funds and then without access, uh, it's a problem. What kinds of shocks can we help people be more resilient to? And we need to think about that carefully in these cases because conflict is the common denominator across these four crises, and we haven't even mentioned Syria or CAR or a number of other places. And our study shows that for every 1% increase in hunger, there's a 2% increase in migration. We have made amazing strides since the early 1980s. Um, hunger has been cut in half. Poverty has been cut in half. The research on famines has contributed to good policies and investments in Bangladesh and Ethiopia, and these have increased the food security there. And uh, there's been a lot of progress. But as has been just said, without security, without an end to conflict, it's very hard to address uh, food insecurity needs in these countries. Unless we engage all partners, which would include private sector, uh, but also the very complex set of religious actors, interfaith, intrafaith, ecumenical, etc. It's very hard to see any path to a solution. There's been a lot of progress made, and it's important that we stay the course. This is no time to cut back or, or stop the efforts. We are in the 21st century. Uh, the rapid development of economy, of the IT sector, you know, so we achieved tremendously, but we still see people hungry, 20 million people are hungry uh, of infamy. How can we let that happen? So it's our sort of joint connective responsibility, accountability. Everybody should feel shame about that.